Hi everybody, welcome to Daisy Lean Design. I'm Allison and for today's tiny tutorial I'm going to show you how to make a soup can caddy. You're going to need some heavyweight material. I have a old pair of jeans, a contrasting or a decorative piece of fabric, and this is optional. You don't have to include this, but if you want it to look sort of like mine, this is you'll need a piece of fabric that is decorative and fun, and then some one inch wide webbing. If you don't have any webbing on hand, I will link below a tutorial for making your own handles, and they're going to be in 12 inch lengths and then all of your basic sewing supplies. I'll include all of the cut sizes and basic sewing supplies down in the description below so that you can refer to them as you need. If you're making the bag the way I did with a feature piece in the front, here are the cut sizes that you're gonna need for everything. So this is gonna be, you're gonna use both legs of a pair of jeans if you're using jeans. Otherwise, a third of a yard of fabric will be great for this project and use something heavyweight that'll help your bag stand up on its own. So we'll just move that back out of the way. So this is the back of my bag and it measures nine and a half inches wide by 11 inches tall. My panel for the front, I'm using nine and a half inches wide by nine inches tall. And here's my corresponding piece of decorative fabric. I'm going to back it with the denim to make it sturdier. And I'm gonna add a nine and a half inches wide by three inches tall piece to the top, like this guy here, so that um, it's nice and reinforced for the handles. The side pieces are gonna measure seven inches wide and 11 inches tall. And then the bottom of my bag is gonna measure nine and a half inches wide and seven inches deep. I'm also going to use two lengths of 12 inch um, 12 inches long, one inch wide poly webbing for this project. And now it's just a matter of putting it together. If you are skipping the decorative front piece, then all you're going to need are two uh, <clears throat> plain pieces that measure nine and a half inches wide and 11 inches tall. So your choice, dealer's choice for sure, sewer's choice. But if you are going to add this decorative panel, then your first step is to lay your panel on the front of your heavier backing piece of fabric and quilt it somehow to, you know, quilt the layers together so they don't separate. So if you see on my slice of lime bag, there are some stitching. I just followed the general shape of the picture and did some stitching lines just to hold this piece to the backing piece so that the layers stuck together. And I'll do the same on the pairs. Um, I might just outline a couple of the pairs or do simple straight um, diamond shape on my stitching, but just something throughout the whole uh, design so that it stays and sticks to the background fabric for my bag piece. Back from quilting, you can see, bring you up close, you can see a couple of my stitches here. And I didn't belabor this point very much. I didn't really worry about where all the quilting was going because when I put the bag together, the edges of all my fabric pieces are gonna be, um, are gonna attach these two pieces together, but just to give it some extra structure, and it looks kinda cute, I gave it some extra stitches. And then the next part is to attach our thin top piece to our main bag front piece. Lay those right sides together. And we're gonna use a half inch seam allowance to stitch those together just across this top edge right here. And there are my two pieces together. I opened up that flap and pressed it so that the seam allowance was going towards the shorter piece and then just went back to the machine and top stitch that down. And now my front piece measures the same as my back piece. They're both nine and a half inches across and 11 inches tall. And now we make a tube with all of the rest of our bag pieces to make the body of the bag. So we're going to connect the front to the side and the side to the back and the back to the side 
and back again to the front, making a tube all the way around with all of our pieces here. At this point, you'll have one big long strip of front side, back side of your bag. And you'll make it into a tube by just bringing those two ends together, right sides, and making one last seam on that side. Again, you're gonna do them like all the others, stitch from top to bottom, leave a half inch open at the bottom and you'll press this seam open as well and you'll have and a tube my fabric tube you see all four sides we're looking at the wrong side of the bag because we still have work to do on this side but all four sides are sewn together all of my seams are pressed open and all of my bottoms have a half inch um, opening on each seam allowance and that will allow us to put on the bottom of the bag. Before we go ahead and do that, we're going to make our top where our handles are gonna go. And in order to accomplish that, we are gonna use a gauge to mark one inch down from the top. We're gonna to fold the top of our bag down one inch to the wrong side and press it. And we'll do that over at the sewing, nope, at the ironing board. Um, and I'll give you a peek at what that looks like over there. All right, I have the top of my bag slid up over the nose of my ironing board. And I'm going to use my gauge to fold down one inch of fabric. I'm going to get that to one inch all the way around the top of my bag and iron it down with my iron. Okay, I've pressed all the way around the top of my bag. I was mindful of my seams, making sure that they stayed open along that edge as I was pressing. And then to deal with this raw edge here, I'm just going to tuck that up and under and press it one more time all the way around the top of the bag. So I'm just going to sort of open up what I've already done, tuck up the raw edge and bring that fold back down and repress it. So I'll wind up with a half inch fold at the top rather than the full one inch fold. We'll do that all the way around the back. Okay, there's my pressed edge right there. And I've shifted the bag around so that I'm working with the back panel. And we're going to add in my handles now. And these are going to go on the back panel and then also on the front panel, which is the part that has the pairs. Um, on it. I'm going to use my gauge to measure in one half inch. Nope, one and a half inches. Sorry. Let's see, one and a half inches from my seam. And I'm going to take one end of my strapping and tuck it way up under into the little fold that I've just made. So I've tucked it all the way up to this top here. And I'm going to put a pin or a clip, whatever you have that you like using. Clips would be probably be a little bit easier with something this thick. And I have that guy in place. And then I'm going to measure from the other, the next seam over here, one and a half inches from that seam. And I'm going to take the other end of my handle and stick it up into the fold as well and put a pin there 
also. I want to make sure I'm not twisting my handle. The handle won't lay flat because you're curving it, but a, a way to make sure that you're avoiding twisting your handle, let's get this to where you can see the bag, is if all the way around the edge of the, like when you're putting your handle down, if the same edge of the handle stays touching the bag without flipping over itself, then your handle is not going to twist. So I have my same edge of this handle touching all the way around the bag. It doesn't come up and over like this and then twist around. So I know that my handle isn't twisted. I'm gonna flip the bag over to the front side and put put the opposite handle in at in the exact same spots measuring in from my seam allowance not the edge of my fabric but from where I actually did my stitches measuring in one and a half inches from either side and placing my handle. Now we're going to start stitching our handles into place so that they stay there and we're going to do this in a series of two seams. The first seam we're gonna put in is going to be along this bottom fold of our bag. So it's gonna catch the handles at that bottom spot. And we're gonna work that all the way around the bag. Okay, there's our handles caught in one stitch so far. We will throw a second stitch um, along the top edge of that fold from the right side at the very end of our video. But for right now, the handles are in place and we need to attach the bottom before we flip anything out to the right hand side. So grab your bottom piece and place it on the bottom of your bag. We're gonna start with one short side and pin it in place work around the bottom of the bag. So let's take a look at our seam allowances here at the bottom. This is why we've left these seams un, like finished. We have a half inch seam that's unfinished here at each corner of your bag, or you should. And we'll start with just one of the short sides. I like to pick the side that has the least amount of fabric, so there's the least amount of bulk. So we'll start here. And I'm going to peel away the extra fabric from our back piece of the bag and try to lay that side piece as flat as possible. So if, you, if you're holding your side piece, you'll have your front and your back to either end, and you can hold those out flat and then just peel away those corners. So it exposes the entire length of that side piece. And that's what we're going to pin our bottom, one side of our bottom to this side piece. So pick your short side of your bottom and line up your corners and the raw edge of that short side and pin it in place. Careful to keep the corner, the adjacent corner of the front and back piece out of the way. So as you come to that corner, again, hold the side piece flat, pull that corner away, and then attach your bottom corner to it and put a pin in there. So now when you go to stitch, this is the, like we did when we were putting the bag together and we left the bottom half undone on the, when we're attaching the bottom, we're going to start stitching from half inch in all the way across and stop a half inch from the end. So I know how to do that because I've done it a million times. If you are not sure of where the half inch is, the stop and start is, you can use your gauge to mark a half inch from the edge of your fabric. And you can either mark it with a marker or um, you can even choose to put your first pin there. So let's go ahead and do that. And the same thing would be on the other side. So this would be your stopping point on this end, mark it with your gauge, 
and set it with your pin. So now I know I'm gonna start sewing here, sew all the way across, stop sewing there, and of course we're back tacking at the beginning and the end of each And seam. there is my first seam on my bottom. You can see my unfinished parts there and here at the beginning, and this will make pivoting to the next side easier. So there's my first seam. This then becomes the next side we're gonna sew. We're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We're gonna lay our front piece as flat as possible, just like this. We're gonna tuck the corner that we just sewed out of the way, lay the corner of the bottom piece flush with the front bag corner, and pin all the way across. And we're going to stitch this side just the same as we did the last side, starting in a half inch, sewing across, stopping a half inch short so that we can pivot around this corner. And we're gonna continue this way all the way around the bottom of the back. So there's the bottom sewn on to the bag. And you can see each corner still has all these loose leftover cornery bits, but that each corner, each side we've joined and they've matched up on each side. So even though you have these loose parts, that's your seam allowance, that corner is nice and stable because it's been reinforced all the way around the bottom of the bag. Okay, so now the only thing we have left to do is to bring the bag right side out. The big fun reveal. We'll push the corners out with our fingers and ta -da, ta -da. we'll bring the handles. The handles are sewn so that they're facing down into the bag. We'll just raise each handle up and pinch it into place. And I like to pin it there because we're gonna run one more seam and that'll make the handle stand up like on our sample bag. So I just pinch the handles into their spots and put a pin in there to hold them in place and do that on the back as well. And then we'll run one more top stitch along that top fold of the bag and that will, what it'll wind up doing, so we're gonna run one more top stitch here along this top fold and with our handles pointing up this time, it'll catch the handles in place and if we look at it from the inside, so as we run our stitch along here, it'll catch the handle here and it'll keep the handle facing up so that when we're all done, the handles will stand up on the bag so we can easily grab them at the market. So let's go ahead and put that last top stitch in. There you have it guys. There is your small can caddy project all ready for your next grocery shop. If you decide to make this bag, I'd love to hear about it. You can post your makes on Instagram. Uh, use the hashtag DLG can caddy so I can see them. And um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.